Cheers. All right. Yeah. Good evening. Um, yeah. My name's Simon. I kind of I make music uh, under the name Der Vast, and I've been doing circuit bending for about twelve to I started two thousand, so it's like twelve to thirteen years now. Um, circuit bending is basically that's kind of the thing where that really got me started into doing electronic music at all because it's a very nice uh, cheap way to get unusual sounds um, out of things that already exist and are already like around um, and I've, I've been doing quite a few of like uh, keyboards and drum computers and things like that um, basically, it means opening up a machine and more or less randomly poking around on the circuit board to see what happens. Um, it's not, once you get to a certain stage, it's not actually that random anymore because you kind of find out which parts do the most of the stuff that you want them to do. and. Um, then most of the time you kind of deal with more or less similar parts. Um, in case of like what I'm doing, I, I kind of, in the last year maybe, started really concentrating on doing, um, on, on doing that with, oh, uh -huh. I realized something. Doing that with with uh, multi effects, like cheap old multi effect pedals you get off eBay for well, around twenty pounds, sometimes less. And whenever I perform live, I've been performing live with this one quite extensively. And um, whenever a guitarist came around, he said like, "Oh yeah, I know that one. That was like my first multi effect." And I basically sold it immediately after I got it because it just sounds shit. Um, they're digital and they kind of have lots of aliasing noises and kind of <laughs> they, they don't sound uh, well. They don't sound like they don't make your guitar really sound pleasant, but they are capable of doing loads of really interesting things on their own and. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, I wanted to show you the insides of this one. Now I realize I'm not going to be able to do that because a pot is fixed to that. I can show you this one. This one is the one that I'm working on right now. So it's not completely finished. But just to give you an overall idea of what it is that I'm exactly doing is like this. There's a RAM chip inside of uh, that thing. There's like this, this thing is basically the processor for um, the effects. It's like a, their own Zoom special DSP chip. Um, but all the data that gets stored, or uh, that, that gets processed, gets stored uh, in a RAM chip. And that, this is what I'm bending. This is what I'm basically connecting uh, cables to, like all the, the tiny pins here. And I solder cables to them, attach them to those switches on the front. And uh, then I'm able to do lots of really interesting sounds with it. Um, the first instrument that I where I realized how powerful something like that can be it was this one, which kind of was the, my transition from going to keyboards to effects, because this is like a, a Casio VA10. It's kind of a rare-ish keyboard. You don't get them very often. It's basically yeah, one of those shit cheap Casio keyboards, but built with a built-in multi-effect processor. Um, 
which is also very cheap and shit and stuff, but it's lots of fun to deal with. So, um, yeah, I might just see if I can, um, what I, what I find, found out with, with, um, those with effects is that, um, well, obviously you need to put something in there, like some, they have to process some sound, um, which works nicely most of the time when you're using feedbacks with it, because then you, they already produce a sound on their own. Um, so I built like a pretty basic feedback. <laughs> basically all um, 
digital instruments that they are, uh, they have usually, like all of them have a crystal built inside. That's a small electronic part that is basically doing the, uh, what's, what's it called? The English word? Clock. The clock, yeah. They, they do the clocking of the processor. And a few years ago, Yeah, um, this one is, is still a bit of a problem. I, I still haven't found out. I'm not using this this one that much anymore because there's whenever I leave it alone for a while, it starts doing that. Um, <laughs> because otherwise it would be a very controllable instrument. But um, <laughs> yeah, um, a few years ago. A chip came out, which is like was is the LTC seventeen ninety nine, which is a tiny. I uh, can't see it here because I don't have anything open that I can show it to you on. It's an SMD chip, which uh, produces. Oh, okay. Um, which produces a clock signal that you can influence with a potentiometer. Potentiometer is like one of those turny, knobby things for everybody who doesn't know that. Um, so you can basically replace the crystal of every, well, yeah, like at most most electronic instruments with this chip um, which is here it is really 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 absolutely tiny it's like this <laughs> big and it's a pain in the ass to solve it mm -hmm. um, but yeah it's it's pure magic because you can instantly pitch shift all of your instruments so it goes like <laughs> which in itself is already a lot of fun. Um, you can do that, of course, with like those um, effects that I'm working with as well. So um, what I basically want to show you a bit is um, this one. That I've, this is kind of the most functional one, although, yeah, uh, the chaos pad is working as well, I can demonstrate that too. Um, so you can do the same thing as like with the keyboard um, in here as well, where you just pitch it up and down, and that influences uh, the sound of it quite a lot, as you can hear. Um, then there is also the thing with this one, um, where I connected the right enable pin to 5 volts and it goes into a loop. Which is really nice because you can do lots of like rhythmic uh, things with that.
So yeah, like this. The fun thing about these is like they're very accessible and intuitive instruments in a weird way. You can give it into somebody's hand and you don't really need to know anything. You can start exploring from like from square zero and just see whatever is possible with them. With this one I also built in an internal feedback. So the output goes straight back into the input, which gives like, oh yeah, stuff like this. It's yeah, just the basic old feedback that you can then again, um, through building like the LTC 1799 in there, you can pitch the feedback so you can use it for like Termin like things. Um, and it produces a lot. It is kind of. We don't have a sound system here that goes very deep. Um, but just imagine that this is like this has. A fucking low end. It usually kind of completely scrambles your guts. Um, which I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to reproduce that here, but just you have to kind of think uh, it would be happening. Yeah, um, and there is also with the feedback, I don't really know why it happens. It's like, uh, Again, somebody who probably has like a, a, a more technical idea of either ram chips or, or musical theory might be able to explain to me why, for example, if I uh, push those switches, well... It starts producing rhythms. structure of ramp chips is like I just know what they sound like like <laughs> if you mess with them. Um, and in the case of this one um, they act as a kind of a distortion that you can put in there as really like loud fucking nasty digital distortion that they produce. 